What's going on, everybody? This is John J Gaming on the mic here, coming at you with a brand new episode of the FCS Dynasty here on NCAA Football 2006, and we are deeply entrenched into this first season of this dynasty. We are getting close to the end. We got a good number of top 25 matchups as well as multiple games that I'm going to be showing out here today that are going to really influence some of these conference championship races. You know, that's the exciting part about this last third of the season. So I hope you guys are really are excited about this episode, man. Eight games on tap should be a good one. Make sure you go ahead, smack that like button, hit subscribe. If you're new, if you liked touchdowns being scored right there is Akron. The number seven team in America is going to strike first. They will take the lead, but Ball State here, they are also going to go ahead and show some serious fight as we got a 51-yard touchdown pass and just an absolutely incredible throw. I mean, look at this pass, you know, clean pocket to work with, nice rollout to the left and just throw this thing, just an absolute dot to where only his receiver can go out there and make the catch. But Akron will soon go ahead. They will strike back here as well. They get a touchdown on the board here as well. Quick hitter uh, down the seam. Yo, you're really using his elite size to his advantage. And Akron will temporarily take the lead. And not only take the lead, but they're also going to go ahead and extend it here as well. As that was a tough run on the triple option. Yo, running through really a couple of defenders there uh in, in addition and oh it might be four defenders uh to make that touchdown happen i mean it's great running as we're up to, got an eight point game here got a chance to really go ahead and put this game away once and for all get it to the hands of your star tailback and not only does he manage to go ahead and get that first down but he's gonna get into the end zone again it does seal the deal so Akron will take care of business in the first game of this episode. They will win by a final score of 31 to 13. We'll see if Ball State remains in the top 25. Akron has been a really tough team of uh, this season, especially within the MAC conference. I don't think they've lost a single game in conference play now that I think about it. But that being said, you know, this really was barreled down to turnovers. I didn't show all the turnovers just because if I did, you know, this video would be well over over an hour, like for this game alone, um, because of that. So didn't do that, but got more exciting action here. We got Grambling State against Bama State on deck. Now, Alabama State, man, there was a team that was ranked in the top 25 at one point, you know. But whenever we see them in gameplay, it's it hasn't been impressive. They have not won a single game in gameplay. But despite all of that, they are still in the hunt for the uh, Big 12 North uh, Championship title. Uh, Grambling State is currently tied for first place, you know, with that 3-2 record in conference play. And then, you know, Alabama State's one game behind. They're 2-3 in conference play. So, Alabama State, they need this game in order to keep themselves, you know, in range of, uh, you know, that division championship to move on. To the conference championship game uh, at the end of the season big 12 did have a championship uh between two divisions uh back in ncaa 06 when that game was first uh conceived of uh i'm hoping that in ea college football though that it gives us the option to uh, create conference championships without having the divisions hopefully that's a thing uh in ea college football but still a year out we'll have to wait and see as for the action on the field though how about this catch Getting it to his star receiver. That was the backup quarterback, by the way, that made that throw. And that is an absolutely big-time throw to make as well. Because that was like off-body. That is not an easy throw to make as well as Alabama State. They fumble the football. And Grambling State is going to recover here. The Bulldogs with a chance to go ahead and make this a two-score gain. As they hand it off to the fullback, and that fullback is going to be rumbling and stumbling his way into the end zone. A touchdown for Grambling State. 
and here we go 14 to nothing lead here and if you're the alabama state hornets you desperately and i mean desperately need a spark to make sure that this game you know does not become a slaughter on your home field but wait a minute now tyler o'neill taking it down the middle of the field he's gonna be dancing his way into the end zone there was no flags either so right just like that one possession game we'll see if this uh defense can come up with some stops and sure enough it does so a very exciting first quarter of action here you know one score game of uh, both teams definitely coming with some intensity for sure as alabama state with a chance to tie this game gonna look over to his right gets it to his tailback but his tailback fumbles the football as well already the second turnover of this game for alabama state thankfully it doesn't kill them too much grambling state only able to get a field goal out of it so it is 17 to 7 although tyler o'neill he is going to strike again though this time not on special teams though but on the offensive end quarterback just had enough time he found a wide but naked open tyler o'neill downfield and it's gonna be cut down to just a field goal game we'll see how gramley state can re uh, can respond looks like could be some trouble though as we got one person missing complete lifting on the tackle he was if i was gonna be gone like a girl in a country song i really did but you know miss one tackle miss two tackles right there just you know not even making an attempt it seems like not a lot of effort on his bama state defense remember this was the same defense that got shredded for 100 plus points early in the year against new mexico state that did happen i believe it was back in week number three but good stand there makes it third and long as Grambling State's going to try to get it into the end zone through the air. And sure enough, it's going to happen. Touchdown, Gambling State. And it's back to a two-score game. Couple minutes left to play. As that does take us into that first half. An exciting first half for sure. A lot of actions uh, going both ways. But it looks like Grambling State, they might seize the good old-fashioned M.O. here as they force their third turnover of this game so now a chance here to come out here and you know get it back to a two score game we'll see if this offense can go ahead and do just that and sure enough huge throw down the sideline and how about the effort by that receiver to go ahead and keep his feet in bounds that is not as easy as it looks even when you're all by yourself like that his momentum was taking himself towards out of bounds that's not an easy thing to do and the fact that he was able to control his body in a fashion to do just that that's a massive deal and so is this run nice run up the gut by carlos campbell he's having a good day so far 13 for 79 and that that was not an easy run to make they originally did have contain at the line of scrimmage he just found his way out of there so the drive still continues for the Hornets as Tyler O'Neill makes himself another catch downfield. He's having a huge day today. Five catches, 120 plus yards already. I have a feeling that he's not going to be done just yet. They need some points on the board because it's, it's looking like a shootout out here, man. It definitely has some track meet kind of potential. And sure enough, Alabama State finds the end zone. A touchdown for the Hornets. But look at this. Getting to the start of fourth quarter. For the first time today, Alabama State with a chance to tie this game. As Campbell, he gets loose and it's going to be another touchdown for the Hornets. All knotted up at 31. How about just following the blockers? Able to make a man miss an open field as well. So it's all knotted up at 31 apiece. So you do all this work to finally get it all knotted up all tied in the fourth quarter defense has been doing a little bit better here in the second half but then you do all that work and then grambling states they retake the lead in an instance a kick return for a touchdown and goes for 90 yards and so back to where we started alabama state being down by a touchdown and he overthrows his running back that's kevin bomar who has his second interception of the game. He got an interception 
back in the first half. And now, Gramley State, you know, they couldn't take advantage. So, still one score game, but they turned the ball over a second time. Two times in the last two possessions. At this time, this was far more dangerous. A scoop and score. So now just four minutes left to play in this game. You're down by two possessions. You got to go quick. We'll see if Alabama State, they can get a response as well. As it looks like Tyler O'Neill kind of got in his way a little bit. Still a great run by Carlos Campbell. But I felt like it could have gone for a little bit more. Glad that it did work out. Uh, definitely need to get some quick yards upfield. So a little bit of bold strategy for Cotton. We'll see if it works out for them. As is a play action. Quarterback going to go ahead. No, it's another interception. Wow, what a day for this Grambling State defense. That is the third interception that has been forced. And still a two-score game. I mean... You got to, at some point, if you're Grambling State, you got to do something, you know, at least do a little bit better job of, you know, controlling the clock towards the end of the game to put them away because now Carlos Campbell's got his touchdown and all of a sudden things could get very interesting. And you know what? We just might have some sort of miracle coming down here, man, as not to mention Grambling State, they go free and out on the very next possession. So here comes the Hornets, an opportunity to tie this football game late here. Maybe a little bit of overtime potential, or maybe they'll go for it. Cam Bentley, throw down the sideline, he finds Tyler O'Neal. How about this? O'Neal coming through and making big plays for your team inside the 30-yard line. And here comes the Hornets. They are not buzzing away without a fight. Bentley in the pocket facing intense pressure gets out of it though and look who he finds again tyler o'neill intense coverage but this man let's just be honest simply built different and ladies and gentlemen we got ourselves our second overtime game of this series i was witnessing in gameplay now grambling state they do get a field goal so all they need to do is get a touchdown to win this game or at least you know settle for the field goal to get it to double overtime but seven turnovers for alabama state that's gonna ultimately be the difference i don't know why they're dancing to be honest with you they lost the game but that is gonna wrap things up here for game number two i told you man there's gonna be some intense action remember they're playing for a potential spot in their respective conference championships so that takes Bama State in a tough position. They're now two games out. Grambling State, at least for the time being, some other teams still need to play. But at least for right now, Grambling State, with that 4-2 conference record, they will, for the time being, have sole possession of that first place positioning. We'll see what shakes out here in the rest of this episode, though. We'll have to keep an eye on that. So we just witnessed a backup quarterback on the road win a key conference game. We'll see if any of these other games can live up to that kind of hype as we got some crucial action here in the Big Ten as well. We got Eastern Illinois who, despite just chilling at 500, I mean, they're, they're right there in that conference championship race. They're one game back. Meanwhile, Tennessee Tech, they are currently sitting, you know, one game ahead, or at least they're tied for the lead for the Big Ten conference. They uh, actually are making... Also, their very first appearance in the top 25 this year, uh, led by their quarterback, Dante Hampton, who's been pretty solid this year. 2,000 yards passing, 16 touchdowns, 4 interceptions. Should be an interesting game. Could be a little bit more of a shootout as well. Eastern Illinois, as y'all already know, more known for their offense. I mean, the defense is not a headliner, clearly, for the Eastern Illinois Panthers, that they just give up. When we won the first plays of the game, a 61-yard bomb. Uh, created based off of like yards after the catch. I was surprised that it didn't end up going for six. But running back though, that running back does end up going for uh, for six. So you love to see that. And that being said, Tennessee Tank they are going to go ahead and take that first lead. You know that first blood, making it seven to nothing. As Michael Wilson, he's gonna hang in the pocket, and this is what makes him so special. 
he finds Eric Vaughn down the middle of the field. 57 yard reception. Now this is a guy you definitely got to watch out for. Eric Vaughn, he's averaging over nine catches a game. He is, he's like that, man. We, we're going to see just how good he is, you know, seeing him play against a top 25 team. You know, team that just got to the top 25 is the running back actually takes care of the rest of the business. Gets chopped down from behind. Looks like a little bit of a painful fall, but, you know, Tennessee Tech, we saw them score first in this ball game. And now we see Eastern Illinois do the same thing with their first possession. But after a defensive stop for the Panthers, it was Eastern Illinois' offense is going to go ahead and retake the field here as Eric Vaughn. How do you cover this guy, right? Like we've seen double coverage doesn't work. A uh, single coverage, you know, you're really asking for for a depth wish to be uh, to be honest with you guys. Um, yeah, I don't know how you stop this kid, but he, they, he's very talented for sure. We'll see if they go to him here in the red zone, though, as they're on the 13. No, they run it again. The fullback. Fullback you, baby. And somewhere out there, not the expert, is going to be smiling right here. You know he loves his fullbacks, and he's going to love this touchdown as a result of it. It's a nice cut as well. Look at this. That was a great cut. You love to see it, man. You absolutely love to see it. Now a 14-7 game in favor of the Panthers. We'll see how Tennessee Tech can respond. Hampton going to try to throw one over the middle, and that is incredibly tight coverage. Oh, man, only a select few quarterbacks in down here at the FCS level can make that type of throw. And Dante Hampton, he's certainly one of them, and it's going to lead directly into another touchdown. Keep in mind, you know, we're, we're still like early in the second quarter. You know, we already seen four touchdowns in this game. So possibly we might see ourselves, you know, two track meets in a row. Uh, I didn't realize track season was fully in swing at the moment. But Eastern Illinois, they turn over the ball for the first time. And I think it's Vaughn that coughs it up. Oh, you hate to see it. But Tennessee Tech, they don't do anything with it. So it still remains a tied game. Michael Wilson's actually going to go ahead and run for the first down. And not only does he get that first down, he actually picks up quite a few more yards afterwards. You know, that's the thing with this quarterback, Mike Wilson. You know, he's got a good arm. You know, don't get me wrong about that. He is definitely more than capable of being a pocket passer, but he's sneaky mobile. You know, we, we don't see it a lot because of his scheme. As I, I go ahead and jinx him, he throws a interception right to Richard Adams uh you don't uh so that's on me for uh jinxing him as the commentator for this uh episode but again Tennessee Tech they don't do anything with it it's still a really close game still all knotted up we see them going downfield once again another nice play you know that's that slant pattern man they, they're leaving the middle of that field wide but naked open and until Tennessee Tech makes some adjustments I would be attacking that all day long but that's just me, though. Or you're just going to find your favorite receiver, Eric Vaughn. Another touchdown, 43-yard bomb. And Eastern Illinois is going to go ahead and seize the lead. That is a double in and go. That is not an easy route to defend whatsoever, especially if you're not ex expecting it. You don't see it on film. But Tennessee Tech, they still get the ball. They get an opportunity here. Oh, what a spin move. Oh, is he going to take it for six? Yes, sir. Oh, baby. Vince Fortinot, you didn't have to do it to him like that. Look at this. That was a tight window, first of all. And just jukes him out of his shoes, man. He, he's spinning all around. You know, he's trying to figure out what the heck just happened. And here's the thing. We're not even done with the first half yet. 20 seconds left to go. We might see Eastern Illinois do the exact same thing. Wilson got some time. No one touching him. He's going to throw it deep, and it's Vaughn again. Another touchdown for Eric Vaughn. Whose man is this? Who's supposed to cover him? Because clearly no one's stepping up to the challenge right now. He's going off. Huge reason, by the way, why Eastern Illinois got to go into the halftime locker room with a touchdown lead. But there's other receivers that, Mayor, that can make some plays after the catch. I mean, this guy right here takes it downfield. We've seen him make a couple of catches already. Not as talented as Eric Vaughn, but 
you know, he's doing good. He's doing some good stuff too. And now goal line situation. Gonna hand it off to the fullback once again. And we don't get one fullback touchdown in this episode, but we get two fullback touchdowns in this episode. And now Hampton needs his offense to get into gear. Because clearly the defense, they might be uh, taking a little bit of a day off. Far not though. He is a very capable runner. He's going to take it down the sideline. Gets it inside Eastern Illinois Territory. He's been quietly having a solid year as well. Over 500 yards rushing. That is uh, what he officially gets to uh, with that run right there. A few touchdowns as well. More known also for passing the football. So if anyone can make up this deficit, Tennessee Tech certainly can do that as well. And speaking of that passing game, how about that catch down the right-hand side? Just a dot. Beautiful arcing throw. And now in the red zone, we're going to get some points on board. Four or not. With a direct snap. He's going to go ahead. He's going to run in the end zone. Touchdown. Golden Eagles. And just like that, it's a one score game. 35 28 in favor of the Panthers. Wilson. He's going to watch it downfield. Oh my goodness. What is happening? Oh, which is not caring about defense anymore. What is going on? Another fantastic catch. That is double coverage. That is, I don't know how he came down with that catch, but you know, uh, you know, good Lord works in mysterious ways, and so does Eric Vaughn. Another strike in the end zone. He just keeps it coming, and he keeps just absolutely poured it on. 42 to 31. In a two-score game, Tennessee Tech desperately needing some points on the board. At least a field goal, and that is the exact polar opposite of what they were looking for. The first turnover of the game for the Golden Eagles there, and Hampton really with an untimely interception right there. It's not, not something that you really want to see at the moment, and a chance to really go ahead and put this thing away. Golden Eagles desperately needing a stop. And, oh, wait a minute. That's fumbled, too. Someone grab it. Okay. Tennessee Tech grabs it. That's the third turnover of the game for this Golden Eagles defense. So, it's really been, like, hot or cold either to get a turnover or a loud touchdown. There really is no in-between as Tennessee Tech, they can't take advantage of the turnover. So, another spot for them. They'll run some time off the clock. Less than 50 seconds left probably going to be an eastern illinois victory and it's going to be submitted with this touchdown in the final minute of this ball game and the panthers eastern illinois starting to come on here in the second half of the season they're now five and four they're still in that big 10 championship hunt i'm just saying don't call to come back yet folks but eastern illinois they win this game big 49 to 31 and here's the crazy thing about this game, right? Like you saw like the graphic earlier in this one. Um, Eastern Illinois, they did not get to do a very good job of taking care of the football. They had three turnovers, only forced, you know, one themselves. And usually if you win the turnover battle, you win the game. But unfortunately for the Golden Eagles, that's not the case. So another top 25 matchup here as we have the battle for the Mayor's Cup here. That's going to pit number 10 Rice going up against the number 20th ranked team in the nation. The SMU Mustangs here. And this, although it is a top 25 matchup, it is still not the game of the week. But still has some implications. You know, we got team, two teams that are still certainly in the hunt here for uh, the Conference USA uh, division. So we'll see how all of that uh, like uh, pans out. Richard Johnson, he's someone to watch out for, uh, not because he's someone that does uh, you know happen to have like huge passing numbers, five touchdowns, three interceptions, not that impressive. Uh, but he is someone that you know does run the football extremely well. But SMU, they uh, they do things a little bit different. They don't run that wishbone. They run more of a spread offense. They like to spread you out, and they like to throw the football and, S and it's going to be interesting to see how this game ends up going down simply because uh these two teams have really different styles in terms of uh how they attack things on offense so 
we'll see who can go ahead and establish their will and dominance first uh but right now it looks like smu they do get the early advantage already see them with a couple of touchdowns this is a great throw by the way keeping him in stride and he's able to run away from the rice defenders as well and a 14 nothing lead is now another throw for smu that's gonna go directly into the end zone and it's another touchdown we're not even out of the first quarter and this is really a nightmare scenario right now if you're rice your offense is not built to pass the football they're not built to do that and yet here we are barbecue on the titties uh gonna have to really pass the football a lot here going forward if they have you know really any sort of opportunity to go ahead and try to come back from this deficit that they already got going on 28 to nothing man that is just absolutely brutal and you want to make things worse you know special teams so i'm showing special teams and you know you already know it's about to go down something about to go down and sure enough it's another touchdown for the smu mustangs and top 25 matchup remember rice came into this game number 10 team in the nation and they are just taking them to the woodshed another touchdown 42 to nothing before we even go into the halftime locker room so you know needless to say backups got plenty of playing time in this game smu they're gonna win very convincingly winning 56 to 7 so we also got to check in on north dakota state now north dakota state they've been they've been feeling a little bit disrespected not gonna lie i mean number 19 in the country they got an undefeated record at eight and zero, and at least on paper north dakota state they have the the most talented roster in this fcs dynasty you know they just have the thing where you know when created teams and i'm not talking about the fcs teams you're important but like when created teams go into ncaa football 06 they automatically go right from the bottom so when this season first started north dakota state was in the bottom 12 of those preseason rankings not at the fault of them necessarily i mean they're, they're definitely much better than a bottom 12 team but uh, that's just where the game put them you know so it was it's been uphill climbing if they were in a more reasonable position they should be and i think in my opinion they are of uh, the number one team in college football i mean i'll i don't care what the rankings say i think north dakota this bison squad number one team in college football if they uh, make it into postseason action watch out uh but they got to get through portland state first man and right now i mean portland state hasn't had a great year three and five themselves but uh we got some things going down here man how about what we got shaking out uh north dakota state doing a great job forcing turnovers early taking their opponent seriously it's easy you know to see a sub 500 opponent as an undefeated team and kind of assuming that is going to be an easy win that's not always the case i mean we've seen great upsets uh throughout college football both in here in this series specifically as well as in real life so you know just shoot out, shout out to north dakota state for you know actually taking them seriously and how about this we got a safety on screen we did it again boys the second safety that i've seen in gameplay this season north dakota state they do get it it's nine to nothing and not only do they manage to get additional points on board but we also see them get the ball because of how you know how the rules are and brian alexander he just throws a beautiful football they don't pass it very much they are more of a run heavy type of football team but when brian alexander gets the chance to throw the football it is really something else to watch but the thing about him he can uh, run this triple option extremely well to go with it as again not even out of the first quarter at least not quite yet but it's already 23 to 3 now portland state these this viking squad they will uh get a field goal on their next drive to at least make sure that you know they at least will not be shut out there will not be a shutout here in this game at the very least so they got that going for them but that being said north dakota state they have 
been able to run basically whatever they want so far they haven't really had any issues uh with running their offense and alexander what he gets going as well that is a just a fantastic toss down the sideline had all that space to work with easy touchdown as well i mean look at this throw great throw i mean his receiver was but but naked open but you still gotta hit him though like that's the thing it is now 30 to 3 here as the onslaught just keeps going and there's it might be one of those days where everything is going right for one team and everything might be going wrong for another team we, we might be seeing that here uh with portland state um you know eastern washington i mean they have similar talent level as portland state and they were still able to at least try to find a way to make things a little bit more competitive but i mean we're not really seeing that here necessarily um portland state or matter of fact weber state as well they were also the last two opponents that north dakota state has played in gameplay uh not really seeing that uh, it's definitely not close whatsoever and matter of fact they don't let up whatsoever a 90 burger on portland state they win 93 to free somebody hide the women and children so we go ahead now and check in on another not nationally televised game but a regionally televised broadcast checking in on some acc action now both teams still in it in their respective division we got the james madison dukes coming in number 13 in the country they are one game behind new hampshire and norfolk state in the same predicament granted less of a record and less of a uh, you know reputation uh in this season going in four and four they gotta find a way to contain kenny raymer that's not gonna be an easy thing to do 28 touchdown passes he does also only have the one interception thrown the entire season so if norfolk state can find a way to contain his passing attack specifically then you know norfolk state is going to have a chance to win this game but you know what it's easier said than done man there's a reason why james madison is really good because that that passing attack man it really legitimately is simply built different right like it is simply uh on a different level um so norfolk state they're gonna have to really uh get a lot of points on the board they want to win this game uh they're down seven nothing already that will help them out a little bit though nice throw down the sideline or not down the sideline but across the middle of the field so now norfolk state they got a little bit of a drive going third and six a chance to go ahead and you know tie things up here potentially and sure enough they're gonna actually get into the end zone here they actually are going to tie the football game let's go man nice little throw as well except they somehow find a way to miss the extra point so if they don't tie this thing up they are going to be down by one here and james madison special teams are going to start taking over a little bit right on the next play after that touchdown we got a 89 yard touchdown return a kick return that still makes it a one possession game but instead of it being like a seven point difference should the extra point was made and usually it is uh it's an eight point difference now so that could uh come into play later on if this game does somehow find a way to remain close the entire time but right now uh kenny raymer he is on it today he is absolutely on top of things right now gonna fake the handoff he's gonna roll to his left and that will make it touchdown number 30 on the year he is on that path to try to lead the NCAA. I think he's in competition with, I believe, Kenny Williams out of New Mexico State right now over in the WAC conference, you know? But, like, Kenny Raymer, he's been finding a way to really make it happen as he's going to throw it downfield. This could be touchdown pass number 31, except he gets brought down inside the five-yard line. A chance to make this a three-score game already as Raymer going to rifle this thing into the end zone. Another touchdown. Touchdown number three for today for Kenny Raymer. And it's 28-6 already. Not really what you're looking for if you're Norfolk State and you're trying to make it to that conference championship game. Get the opportunity. 
to play in postseason action. Dutch sack, not going to help either. It's now second and 16. So they're really backed up in there as they tried to throw it over the middle, but threw it directly in the direction of John Wright, who was just eyeing that quarterback the entire time. They were playing in his own defense, and if things were already bad enough, I mean, you start them out in the red zone, and they're going to easily capitalize off of that. Another touchdown for James Madison. It's going to be 35-6 to after this extra point does end up being made. Just another career day for Kenny Raymer. As we get to the final minute here of this first half, free and out for Norfolk State. You know, just nothing going right for them uh, today. As, hang on, oh, uh, we're going to have a fumble there. Usually, when we see an animation like that, that does trigger a fumble, but we didn't get that there, surprisingly, as Raymer looks for the end zone, and it's his barbecue chicken out here, man. 42 to 6 being the score. Kenny Raymer has five touchdown passes already here in this first half. Five. Five of them. And the worst part about it is Norfolk started with the football. So we're going to have to kick this ball right back to James Madison to start the second half of action. And if things weren't already bad enough, first play of the second half, we see them give up a huge touchdown an 82 yard kick return for a touchdown so two special teams touchdowns for james madison in this one they also do manage to find a way to win big winning 77 to 13 as we'll hope for a little bit more competitive game here as we check on another big 12 matchup here we got texas southern going to go ahead and taking on the catamounts of western carolina led by Head coach Owen Benfield, one of your guys' custom coaches, by the way, as they are embroiled in the Big 12 South. Both teams, 4-1 and one in conference play. So whoever wins this game is going to tie themselves up with Southern to get themselves to 5-1. and one. Whoever loses this game, however, they fall to 4-2. and two. And with how little time we got left in the season, that could ultimately be the difference between Making it to that conference championship game, fighting for the opportunity to play for that Big 12 title, and you know maybe being left at home, it really starts to get critical right now. As we'll go ahead and get into it, Brandon McGee going to start throwing a really fantastic pass, perfect arching pass downfield. It ends up being a 49-yard touchdown pass. As it looks like Texas Southern, they did end up trying to go ahead and sending the blitz but i'm gonna tell you something right now that definitely did not work and western carolina they will strike first but texas southern they do some really good things on their first drive as well though first of all getting a pass like that to go is now third down they're actually one of the best third down conversion teams in the country 50 percent but they actually don't get the uh, first down that they're looking for so they were gonna have to settle for the field goal however um because of a penalty they do get an automatic first down and texas southern does end up making them pay for it here as well a touchdown is gonna go ahead and tie this game up but score still remains the same here as we get into the last couple of minutes here in this first half all knotted up at seven apiece as running back is going to go ahead, take the handoff. It's his second score of the day. And Texas Southern is going to take that 14-7 lead. How does head coach Owen Benfield get his guys to respond? 139 left to play in the first half, and he takes a sack. Not something that you want to do. That's going to end up being a fourth down. And okay, we're going to have to punt this football away. Texas Southern. They're going to get another possession here as here we go. Second and goal from the six yard line. Quarterback, he's feeling it. He's going to fake the handoff, going to throw it towards the end zone. And it's going to be incomplete. The receiver drops the pass. He had a chance to get some points on the board and he fumbles the bag, man. You hate to see it. So now they'll try again here. Third and goal. Same spot. Six yard line. It's another play action. This time though. 
No worrying about catching the football. My man, my fellow brother in Christ, wide, butt naked open, and it's going to go for a touchdown. As that will give Texas Southern a 21-7 lead here. As we now jump into that second half of action. McGee desperately needing a spark from his guys. This might be it, though, as the slant pattern is going to net not only a huge game, but also a touchdown. Another case where Texas Southern, maybe that defensive coordinator feeling a little bit too confident. They send the blitz, and it's just a perfect play call against the blitz that directly leads to a touchdown. But problem is, defense is having a hard time getting stops. Uh, Western Carolina, they already gave, surrendered 28 points in this game. It's now 28-14 to 14 and in favor of Texas Southern. So needless to say, things are not looking good for the Catamounts. Is now McGee's gonna drop back the pass, but he's gonna let go of the football. It's going to be ruled as a fumble. And Texas Southern, the Tigers, are going to take over. As it looks like Brandon McGee like scrambled outside of the pocket. And it was just just did a great job of you know just stalking him and installing him. Unfortunately, though. Texas Southern cannot take advantage. And the Catamounts will be back at it again with the White Vans inside the 10-yard line. McGee dropping back to pass. Got a clean pocket to work with. Looking towards the end zone. Touchdown, Catamounts. And it's all down to a one-possession game here. How about McGee rifling that bad boy in there? Able to get that touchdown to get it back to a one possession game and then going back at it on the following possession McGee really starting to feel himself now he's getting that cleaner pocket than what he did originally in the first half and now a chance to tie this game up second and five McGee looking gonna throw it over the middle but it's gonna be intercepted and this could be a little bit of trouble except he will end up being caught from behind but a big play by the Tigers defense it preserves at least right now the lead for Texas Southern got 115 left to play though in this game they got a chance maybe one more shot to go ahead and at least you know maybe force overtime we'll have to wait and see how this next minute unfolds as they are across the 30 already. Going to get it out to his receiver. His receiver running away from some defenders. And it's a touchdown. 28 all. And it's going to go into overtime. Texas Southern. They get the ball first to start this overtime period. They start things out with a touchdown. That does mean Western Carolina. They got to get a touchdown themselves here. If not, that means... Texas Southern is going to win the football game. They are in a goal line set, though. So McGee has a chance to force double overtime, and that's going to be tipped away. Great stand by the defense. He was looking for that back shoulder throw into the end zone, but got a hand on it. And now it's third goal from the nine. McGee, again, facing pressure, and he's going to be brought down for a loss. The fourth sack of the season for Lonnie Tucker. And here we go. It all comes down to this. Fourth and goal from the 14. If they don't get to the end zone, this game is over. McGee looking to pass. He's got some time. He has to get rid of it, though. And it's broken up. It's over. And Texas Southern is going to end up winning the football game. Texas Southern Tigers. What an exciting game that we just watch unfold right in front of our eyes, man. As the Tigers, they are going to win by a final score of 35 to 28. So that does mean they will remain tied with the Southern Jaguars in their division. Whereas Western Carolina, because of his really just gut punch of an overtime loss, going to one game back. So with one more game that is still left to be played with the game of the week still uh, on deck. Let's go ahead and take a look around the rest of this NCAA universe just to check out some of the scores throughout the league here in week number 11. First and foremost, we have the South's oldest rivalry between William Mary and Richmond. 
And the Tribe, they end up dominating this one, winning 48 to 7. And William and Mary do get to a 6 and 2 record. They're currently riding a four game winning streak. Whereas Richmond, they now have lost two consecutive games. As for the University of Ohio, they played host to the Western Illinois Leverbacks, and Ohio will continue their winning ways, winning 38 to 28 and should move up a little bit in the top 25 polls. As for Northwestern State, they had the pleasure of going up against the University of Alabama, one of the premier teams at the FBS level, and it certainly was not pretty. Alabama winning 49 to 19 and Northwestern State falling to four and four. Kent State, meanwhile, continues their winning ways as well as they played host to a winless Illinois State squad, winning 45 to 17. Illinois State still desperately searching for that first win of the season. North Texas also takes care of business in Sunbelt Conference action, hosting the Raging Cajuns of Louisiana Lafayette, winning 26 to 6 and improving to 9 and 1. Utah State also continuing their winning ways as well. They beat Southern Utah, another team in the, in the state, by a final score of 24 to 9. Southern Utah putting up a fight, and actually, uh, they were leading at early in this game, but, you know, the talent on the depth chart took over. They win by two scores. San Jose State also getting themselves back over 500 with a road win against Northern Colorado, winning by a final score of 34 to 3. The Bears of Northern Colorado still winless on the year. Meanwhile, Tulane, who comes in ranked number 15 in the country, they went on the road to play against Rhode Island, and Rhode Island simply could not keep up on national television, losing 45 to 14 and falling to 4 and 4. Buffalo also doing the same thing, beating a winless Indiana State squad on the road, winning 38 to nothing, and improving the 7 and 2 on the first season of this FCS dynasty. However, that being said, we do have some upsets in the miss as FIU, who comes in ranked number 25, well, they probably will not be ranked come next week. They lose to Louisiana Monroe, 48 to 40, an exciting overtime game. Montana, however, will not have that same issue though as we have the brawl of the wild between these two Montana squads and Montana wins the first alliteration of this dynasty, 34 to nothing. UNLV also looking to get themselves into the top five, and this win will help them with that case as they win 51 to 21 over the University of Northern Iowa. Central Michigan, though, they will continue to climb into top 25 as they get a huge win at home against the University of Southern Illinois, winning by a final score of 47 to 14 and improving to six and three. Troy, however, getting a huge blowout win against Florida Atlantic as they try to get themselves back to 500. This will help as they win 41 to 10, improving the four and five, whereas this loss for FAU gets them to that same record. That being said though, Tennessee State ends up being upset by Jacksonville State, losing 42 to 21. Their defense not able to get the job done, unfortunately. And that could, you know, make this race for the New York Big Ten Conference a little bit interesting moving forward. New Mexico State, though, they win 45-24 in whack conference play, beating Stephen F. Austin by three touchdowns, the Lumberjacks falling to 3-6. However, multiple upsets here in the 8 o'clock slates, as first and foremost, Eastern Michigan falls to their rival Western Michigan, 30 to 27 in overtime. This is their first loss of the season. Not as unfamiliar with losing though is Arkansas State, who did come in ranked number 11 in the country. They lose to Mid Tennessee State, 35 to 28. And the moment that you have been waiting for, we get to the game of the week, and it's going to be an absolute doozy. We got the number four ranked Temple Owls going up to the New England part of the country, taking on the New Hampshire Wildcats, number six in the nation, and they are led by their star quarterback, Carlos Montoya, who comes into this game in third place. He was chasing Kenny Raymer, who was, you know, at least when this week originally started, just one touchdown behind him. But he's going to have to be absolutely electric if he's going to help his team 
win against Temple, and this is not what I was talking about. Not only throwing an interception, but on top of that, we see him throw a pick six as well to go with it. So a very devastating blow here in this one as now Temple has the lead. It's 13 to six. And how about Montoya escaping the pressure though? I thought for sure that it was going to be a sack. But look at this, man. How you love to see it, keeping his eyes downfield and turns what probably could have been a five to seven yard loss into a massive gain. And now New Hampshire with a chance to at least tie things up. But unfortunately, a second interception thrown by Carlos Montoya is going to make it, you know, Temple football. And it's now the 10th interception thrown of the year. I don't know what's going on with this quarterback, man. I really don't necessarily know what's going on. But ever since we started conference play, you know, Carlos Montoya just really has not necessarily be this, been the same. I don't know. It's just because, like, there's more, there's been more pressure around him and on this team. And the team has been winning, right? Don't get me wrong. They are still undefeated for a very valid reason. But this team just has not been clicking all the time like what we've been accustomed to like what we've been originally seeing as now we see temple not only get one special teams touchdown we're gonna maybe see them get a second special teams touchdown as joe mcdonald he's going to his farm because he's gonna be going right into the end zone and now a very dire situation here in new hampshire backs against the wall is 27 to 6 but this is how you respond though Montoya a beautiful throw down the sideline and it's gonna go for a really big touchdown and boy did they really needed that right now oh my goodness gracious it's 27 to 13 still a two possession game but this thing is far from over man New Hampshire can still come back and potentially win this game but they have stopped this running back though Willie Ferguson who's able to break two tackles gets it inside the 10 yard line and now the Temple Owls they're going to be really threatening here in the red zone New Hampshire needing to come down and get a stop they have a 78% success rate in the red zone with either a touchdown or a field goal to pay a looking he's got a clean pocket but that's exactly what they needed an interception that's going to keep this at a two score game the wildcats not done yet they got a chance here to make it a one score game third and long montoya dropping back he's got time he's gonna find his receiver downfield and he's gonna bring it all the way touchdown new hampshire it's a one score game here off the back of a 73 yard touchdown pass. Oh my goodness. Let's go, baby. Huge play for New Hampshire, and they needed that sequence. So now, 3 12 left to play. They got a chance to win the game after the Temple punt, but it's picked off. That could very well be the dagger right there, and if not, that one then maybe potentially this one right here probably gonna be a, it is a pick six uh carlos montoya four interceptions on the day and it's just tough because new hampshire was in this game um just needing to make better decisions with the football they probably would have won this game but that's not what happened here unfortunately i mean they almost won this game in spite of carlos montoya not because of him they like they didn't lose because you know of something else they lost because of carlos montoya i mean we gotta we gotta call it how it is here man uh but new hampshire they are going to suffer their very first loss of the year so they will be seven and one but i don't expect them to fall too much templeville they're undefeated and they're going to improve the 10 and 0 so this will complete week 11 action here as we get into the last few weeks here of this regular season man and like i said we've seen a lot of upsets here and we're gonna see a lot of changes here in the ap top 25 
We still have the number one ranked team in the nation, San Diego State. They're still in there. Temple does move up to number two in the country. Uh, but beyond that, you know, a little bit of movement. New Mexico State moves up one. Akron moves up a couple as well. New Hampshire uh, actually getting some respect. They only moved down a couple of spots, even though they did end up losing by multiple touchdowns. So nice job by the posters too. You know, really reaching out and making sure that they were, you know, good in those uh, regards. James Madison, though, they will jump into the top 10 for the very first time. They are now number 10 in the country. Eastern Michigan falls down 10 spots. They're now number 12 in the nation. But, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of stats, close stuff, a lot of teams moving up. Montana and North Dakota State, they both are now in deeper into the the top 20 uh here but you know a lot of new teams entering five new teams matter of fact mid tennessee state is back in they're ranked number 21 in the country georgia southern gets some love for the first time they're now 22 eastern illinois despite being five and four they played some pretty good opponents they're playing great football as of late they're 23rd in the country Delaware gets back in there number 24 and then Idaho will take that final top 25 spot at number 25 in the country with some teams you know that could uh, work themselves in William and Mary they are right there on the cuffs just if they can win one more game that should get them into the top 25 but Texas Southern and then McNeese State who was ranked earlier this year they could also sneak in there as well so still a lot of moving that could happen here in these final weeks of this regular season now the heisman trophy race right now it seems like brian brown still lose uh he is still sitting in first place he had a really good performance of uh, 200 yards of total offense despite his team ultimately losing but with that being said no carry williams he's going to be catching in on him he actually wins player of the week Six touchdowns in that game against, uh, uh, I believe it was Stephen F. Austin. Uh, that's the uh, pronunciation for that. Eric Vaughn, though, had a really big game. Six catches, 224 yards, three touchdown grabs uh, in that performance against Tennessee Tech, helping his guys get over the top. So they're right there in the Heisman conversation. John Reed also getting love versus UT Chattanooga. They're up to number four, and we'll, we'll definitely have to try to watch this team if they are uh, in a situation where uh, their team is in the thick of a Big 12 division hunt. So that's really uh, something to definitely watch out for. And then hanging on by a friend is Barrett Hassan. Now, Barrett Hassan's had some great moments in this season as well. But that being said, you know, suspension's kind of hampered his potential a little bit. He's still there in the Heisman conversation. But I do wonder, like, how much distance between him and that first place guy uh, in Brian Brown. And like I said, the players of the week, you know, for the on the defensive side of football, I mean, Ben Davis, we saw it in the final game. He was absolutely huge. Only had a few tackles, a TFL sack thrown in there. But what really, really made it a difference, and, that, and they ended up winning by two possessions specifically because of that, is those two interceptions and not only did he have two interceptions he also had two touchdowns in the game and you know temple won by 14 that's why they ended up winning as for Kerry williams he just continues to be unstoppable 44 for 61 550 yards passing six touchdowns he was unstoppable uh stephen f austin just did not have an answer in their secondary and you know, that's a huge reason why they won this game and why his squad is still remaining undefeated, sitting at 9-0. So this now officially brings us to week number 12. And listen, we're getting towards the very end, man. We have probably four more episodes before we get into conference championship game and five more episodes before we re have the first ever postseason reveal here for this FCS Dynasty. So things are really heating up. I hope you guys are excited about what's going to be coming down the pipeline. But more importantly, I hope you enjoyed the content in relation to today's action. If you did, make sure you go ahead, smash that like button, hit that subscribe button as well. If you want to be brand new, shoot, even leave a comment for you guys as I would love to uh like reading your guys' comments it's something i extremely enjoy uh, all your support has meant a lot to this channel 
But with that being said, this is John Shake Gaming on the mic signing off. I'm hoping you're all out there having a good one. Take care, everybody.